Alright, so could you name one lesson or idea from abroad that's helped you or your colleagues in your working life? Uh, yes, two years ago when, and when I was travelling, uh, at night time I don't want to uh, wander around, it's not my habit. I just stay in the hotel and just watch the television mm -hmm. and I to watch the sort of uh, inform more uh, sort of uh, knowledge type and things like that. I watch a program uh, which introduced an idea. We call it a dementia village in Netherlands. Yeah, you know, for dementia patients, uh, because it's difficult to control them. Yeah, very often yeah, they are bedridden and all have to be under confinement. Yeah, but in Netherlands they have this idea of uh, having some sort of village where the dementia, in particular, uh, to use uh, 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 innovation and technology. Yeah, IT technology, so that the people can move around. I mean, dementia patient can still move around mm. and track it with the computer, so that if they sudden I got four the ground, then you can pick it up and then. And the wonderful idea they, in order to try to preserve their way of life, they have this sort of a supermarket uh, in the dementia village as well, with a special type of money just for them, right. so that they can continue as if they were. Uh, ordinary people, they go to shop and have things like that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Uh, of course, in Netherlands, they have lots of space can do that. In Hong Kong, we're highly congested. But yeah. still, I think we can we can all the idea and uh, to, uh, to well, in fact, we're trying this new idea in one of the new uh, elderly uh, home uh, uh, in Hong Kong in a new design. Uh, it's not so much uh, on this wonderful idea for the dementia patient, but as a public officer dealing with public policy, particularly in this part of the world, very often we sacrifice the sort of a human touch mm -hmm. because of efficiency, in pursuit of efficiency. Yeah. We often look at public policy as a paper. We work on it, yes, a policy, we deliver. We, for, we very often forgot the sort of human dimension that these people are human. You've got to look at them, the, the receiving them, what are actually the best for them. So I think that is a lot of idea. When I come back, I will share with all my colleagues and all my uh, content saying that, yes, when we look at a design or, or, or delivery on a public policy, we just look at, we, we must not look at all these sort of receiving as transparent, that this is only words on paper, but rather we have to always put it back on the reality. Imagine yourself to be those people who are going to benefit or affected by it. How do you look at it? I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, I'll yeah, have a look at it. Um, and on the other, going the other direction, are there any sort of projects or innovations in your country that might be useful to your peers overseas? Yeah, I think we, we, mean, we, we try to learn from uh, one another. I just mentioned that one major project is to deal with the aging population, challenge the pressure on the public healthcare system, particular on the uh, public hospital system. We need we need to have. Uh, New idea, yeah, to think out of the box, and that's uh, we're pursuing this collaboration between the medical uh, services and the uh, social services because we see that many of these chronic diseases take dementia as example. Once you diagnose them uh, with the present day medical technology, it's not it cannot be cured. Not much you can deal with it on the medical side or with drugs, but rather what they need most are care and carer support because it's a huge burden. Not so much uh, on the public health care system, it's on the family, on the close relatives. So it's very important for us to give them support yeah, to how to de deal with it. And because the number is so big, I mean, you cannot deal with it from the traditional supply side, but rather you have to deal with it from the demand side. And that is, you have to mobilize the community resources. Yeah. You have to make better use of the elderly center, the social service center in the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. and and, and, and equip them with those the facility yeah, and the know-how to, to to provide support for this chronic disease. Dementia is a typical example. I mean, that can be expanded to other uh, sort of diseases as, uh, as well. Hypertension, things like that. Yeah. That's something we are working on. And I understand that other countries are also doing that. So, I mean, there's a I mean, the sort of area I mean, we can, we can share uh, with one another on that. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so in terms of sharing these things globally, um, how can we improve the ways in which senior officials sort of work with and learn from their peers overseas? 
know each other. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the most important thing, human touch. Even though today, I mean, I have this technology, I can see you right on the front of the screen, yeah. but still very different from let's sit together, have a couple of drinks, uh, chat yeah. over a cup of coffee, yeah. or play around with golf. And that's why you build this personal relationship and trust so that you can pick up a phone and talk about it. I just mentioned that uh, in terms of spread of disease, yeah, in terms of people seeking treatment, it becomes globalized. Eh? globalized. They have no respect of boundary and border. But health authority, I mean, still territory based in terms of regulation, in terms of health system. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. I mean, how to deal with this globalization is that we try to match it. Yeah, by people building up this sort of uh, 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 connection. So these are global uh, government forum would be a very good sort of, I think, uh, 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 form and platform. I mean, to promote this sort of personal uh, touch and communication uh, sort of network. Yes. Um, and what are the biggest global challenges in your field over the next five years? Yeah, it's always a recurrent fear. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the huge demand. I think everywhere, huge demand and the public healthcare system. So we need completely new idea and innovation, an innovative idea to deal with it. Because you can never train enough doctor to catch up with the number of patients. Because it's not in terms of number of patients. Yeah. It's because when people get older, yeah, it's the the multiplication of diseases, yeah. So, I and mean, you cannot build a hospital fast enough in a traditional way to deal with uh, the demand for healthcare service. So, we a new new idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Finally, then, what is your favorite book and why? <laughs> Yeah, I think it depends, you know, when you read, you mean, you're for, for different reasons, you, you read for uh, pressure, you read for leisure, you read for knowledge. But I think if you, uh, if you bring it back to uh, my, my job as a pub, pub, public health officer, a public mm -hmm. uh, officer, and very relevant to my field would be, I think, would be the book called The, the Guns, Germs and uh, Steel right. yeah, yeah. Uh, by Jared uh, Diamond. Yeah, at the, I mean, uh, people have different views on, 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 on the book. Yeah, because the, uh, uh, the, they said uh, they cover quite a, a, a big canvas of uh, humankind development. Yeah, but if we look at it from the public health side, uh, the section on the spread of disease is quite very fun. Yeah, when people, I mean, a public health officer, too, we can always learn from, from the history. Yeah, I mean, simply put, explain that I think I mean, when they when they say it, you 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 are, you realize it that. Many of the diseases we face today, particularly for infectious diseases, actually come from the domestication of animals. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like even through from chicken, yeah, uh, smallpox and things like that, all sort of things. Uh, measles, yeah, all from it. Mm -hmm. And it spread uh, in the starting from the 15th and 17th, 16th and 17th century because of exploration, the expansion of empire. So they bring all these, not, not only the disease, but also the domesticated animal to other places in the world and and that disease is spread in such a way. Yeah. And the lesson for us right now is that we are more or less repeating this sort of thing, the globalization. Mm. People so struggle so frequently. Mm. Yeah. It's very similar uh, on, on, on that. And and the and the other one would be on the sort of uh, population growth. Yeah. Because we have enjoyed such a, a long period of a relatively uh, peaceful uh, human development. I mean, you see the population multiply very, very quickly. A lot of big city with very con a congested and dense population. They are the hotbed uh, for for new disease. Yeah. So I think we can we can I mean, refresh our memory uh, by reading this book. <laughs> thank you. Just, I've heard yeah. of that book a while ago. Yeah, I'll have another look yeah. at it. But thank you very much indeed yeah, thank you. for yeah. answering them. Yeah.